fashion sense from Joel Silver? You know, wearing his pajamas. Uh... All right. So Joel Silver <laughs> Silver did appear to wear his pajamas quite a bit around Warner Brothers. But I know. You know here's, the funny thing about it is I had never had a problem with Joel Silver either. I never did either. No. You I know, never did either. everyone, everyone like had a brick to throw at Silver. And I'd be like, oh, you know, every time I talk to Silver, you know what? Be... I think, you know what I think solidified it for Joel was um, his appearance in Roger Rabbit where he plays that crazy director at the beginning who's always yelling and screaming and all that. And I think that sort of um, maybe, maybe. was on people's minds before they met Joel. Cause I've, the, the thing about Joel is he's really, really smart. He knows what he's doing yeah. and he knows the technical end of it. You can't lie to him. If you don't know something that, and you don't really want to say, I don't know either, but if, if there's, if, if a question is asked and you don't know, you say, I will find out. Yeah, I exactly, will find out, exactly. you know, and you and you never lie to Joel. And because um, I, I tell you, I've been on projects where Joel was the, the only sane voice in the room, you know, perfectly no. reasonable producer and a very, very good producer. No, really knows what he's doing and um, smart and guy. He, and he smart knows guy. how to bring people in. He, he was the guy who brought George Harrison in to do the music on Lethal Weapon 2. And he was the guy who brought in both Elton John and Eric Clapton in to do the music. I mean, he, he had all the musicians in his pocket, but Joel had this, Joel always seemed like he was wearing his pajamas. You know, you'd walk into his office and it was like a tribute to himself. He had the pinball machine with his picture pinball on it. He had, he had like okay. the Predator, like full the size mock-up. He had Dr. or Mr. Smith in there yeah. too. From the Matrix, all of that. Yeah. Yeah, all of that. And uh, I remember like I walk in and I'm going to tell this story exactly the way he said it. So everyone knows this is coming from him and not me. But I remember I walked in to drop off a package and there's like three or four guys around him and he's like yelling at him and he's signing stuff. And he goes, you know what this is? And he looks at me, he goes, you know what this is, kid? He goes, these guys and he's pointing at the guys around his desk. They need money. So they say, let's go find a Jew with some money. And he goes, and you know who I am? I'm the Jew with the money. And he's telling this to me. And right. I'm sitting here going, he goes, I'm the Jew with oh the money. God. And I'm like, oh <laughs> and I'm like, I can't say that that sounds like him, but <laughs> I couldn't believe that's I mean, a that larger was, than life figure doing that to you. Yeah. It was like, and I mean, and you know, it was part of it was, I guess he was just frustrated. You know, it turned out, I think that, that if I remember the postscript on the story, correct, it had nothing to do with a film project that he was being asked by these guys to finance like the restoration of the Ennis house, which is the house on Haunted Hill or some archaeological site or something in he, LA. He collected, he collected Frank Lloyd Wright houses. And yeah, had, that's um, something. He had, he had a plantation in South Carolina and he had a mm -hmm. couple in, um, in LA and his right. logo, that logo with all the squares in it, that, that was a Frank Lloyd Wright design that was actually attached to one of his homes that he owned. That and we, we used to wonder if Joel ever sold that house would he have to give that logo up? We, it was an honest question. We didn't know the answer to that. And I still that don't know question. the answer to that. No, so that's the retrospect. Like, I guess they wanted more and more money from him. And this was like the 10th meeting with more and more money to restore some house. And, it, mm -hmm. and that's kind of what came from that later. Or that was my... But I just thought that was such a like a strange way to put it to me. Like here, I'm just trying to drop off like the preview to the Matrix or something for him to approve. I don't remember what it was, but... He was just like, he decides to like bring me into his world and like, as like this, I'm going to vent to you. I'm going to vent to you because you're here. So well, stand, puts, you know. But it puts them on edge because mm -hmm. they don't know who you are. Right. So, I mean, <laughs> you know, I would, I look, I would have played it up for him. I mean, I would have just thrown down the cassette and be like, Joel, you know what I've told you for from day one, you got to fire these assholes. And then. <laughs> oh, that would have been funny. Oh <laughs> man. And that would have been fun. He would have hired you. He would have probably would have. He probably would have. Your road to redemption is paved with tombstones. No quarter, kill all masters. Go to no quarter, kill all masters .com. Rated R.